As government claims to be winning the war on terror, the recent attack on soldiers in Metele Bornu state is a reminder that the insurgents still possess the ability to cause mayhem, especially as the elections draw closer. We spoke to former U.S. military captain Johnson Bish, who explained the reason for the rising military casualty in the Metele attack. The soldiers were not aware, and even when they became aware, it was too late, and they could not have done much because from the information that has been made available to me by people who are serving in that area, they have complained that at the time they became aware that they were coming under attack, they have no ammunition. So they had weapons and they, don't, they didn't have ammunition, which is as good as having none. So that had always been the complaint, not having enough ammunition, not having serviceable equip, uh, uh, weapons, and not having good welfare package. So they were taken on a surprise. And even when it was clear, they had no capacity to defend themselves. The capability was simply not there because they didn't have ammunition. Having served as a combat personnel with the U.S. Army stationed in Iraq and Afghanistan, Captain Bish Johnson says sophisticated weaponry and better intelligence will go a long way in the fight against terror. You know, when I first came into the country, I saw soldiers riding on back of soft skin pickup trucks. You know, they popularly call them haylocks. You know, um, in a war zone, these are very soft skin vehicles. Um, they should not be operated in a combat zone, in a theater of operation. So part of the recommendations that we, that I have always made to the government is that um, we invest more in military equipment. Um, for example, there's what is called MRAP, which is a, a mine resistant vehicle that normally carries soldiers. We have Abram assault vehicles that are equally IED resistant. You know, they're not first plus tanks. Now, but unfortunately, most of these wars or battles, you cannot, it's not something, you can't bomb your way out of them because you really don't know who your enemy is. It's not a conventional warfare. Um, it's more, uh, it's an asymmetric where the person you're fighting, your enemy, you don't know him. It could be anybody. So in that case now, um, tanks, fighter jets may be useless. What may be useful is intelligence and this is the area we have been constantly advising the government to invest more in in the area of intelligence gathering um, by use of equipment um, by, um, by human beings because uh, human intel remains the best and most trusted source of uh, intel but you cannot get that human intel from the people if they are not on your side so we have to do a lot more work in trying to convince the people to be on our side as against being sympathetic to the terrorist group. Meanwhile, Kowa Party presidential candidate Shino Fagbenro Byron has alleged some military personnel may be working in collision with the insurgents. What happened recently shows clearly there's a failure of intelligence. There's been a failure of intelligence and there are issues around sabotage. There are also issues around corruption within the military that has been going on unchecked for a while. Part of that corruption we saw with the conviction of people like Badi, the former chief of staff. What we have seen now is that our military boys are not given the necessary equipment. They were not given the necessary intelligence. As a matter of fact, somebody from either within or close to within must have revealed the locations of Nigerian soldiers. Mark you, one of the Nigerian soldiers, an officer for that matter, was captured alive, which means Nigeria is at war. This country is fast dwindling in terms of security. To, for someone to say that they've dealt with insurgency in the Northeast, I mean, I mean that person is not saying the Nigerian the correct thing. They are still there. That side of the headed monster is still there with them. So the government or they should move decisively against them. Secondly, the issue of going to purchase inferior arms and armor soldiers to face these people that are having rugged weapons. The rugged weapons against them is not in the best interest of this particular country. Whoever is benefiting from the purchase of arms in this country is feeding on blood money. We have inspectors general in the in the, the in the Department of Defense in the US DOD that always you know, audit the accounts, they are external, they are not part of the DOD. 
they audit the accounts and activities of the DOD to make sure that there is no corruption in the system. Because once there is corruption in the defense, then you know that people are going to die. You know, a mistake that you make in combat is, may result to loss of lives. It's not as the same thing as somebody making a mistake out there in the office where you can lose money. Mistake in, in, in combat leads to loss of life, which is what we are seeing that happened in that metella. So external auditing with, is very, very welcome and it's very, very encouraging. And as a matter of fact, they should do it more often. Poor intelligence gathering, reports of arms profiteering and even complicity within the army have been pointed out as some of the issues this administration has to tackle if it stands a chance of winning the war on terror. Captain Bish believes the government must also consider another avenue to ending the insurgency. The truth of the matter is that you cannot kill your way out of this problem because you cannot kill every terrorist in the Northeast. It's not possible. It's not going to happen. And so long as you're not able to kill all of them, even if it's one or two that remain, because what it is is an, it's an ideological war. This is something that is being fought on, on, on religious inclination and is being passed down from father to son. So you are not definitely going to kill everybody. I do support negotiation where it is possible but before you before you negotiate you must make sure you negotiate from the point of strength you know you you push the person you know his back to the wall and then you negotiate on your own terms you don't negotiate on the terms of your enemy from what i have seen so far with the negotiations that we have done it appears that we are even the one that are being pushed to our back and we are negotiating from the point of weakness and on the conditions of on the conditions of the um, of the terrorist itself so negotiations is fine if it's not going to backfire as the controversy surrounding the metele attack continues it is clear that whosoever is in power will have to do a lot more to raise confidence in terms of security in the minds of nigerians roots tv nigeria